Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How are you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Also check out Discord if you can and also the new Udemy links coming up soon in the description. Maybe you find that interesting. But here we go, uh, video number two, right? In Swag Lords of Space. This is going to be a great game, guys. Um, but first of all, for it to be a great game, we have to be able to close the game. So it's not like a virus or anything. So what you want to do for that is, like I said in the last video, use a function called window poll events. Now, polling means to grab something, right? Just grab some. And events are events, basically. Events are events. And the way we're going to do this now is there is a SFML class called SF event. It's a very basic thing. I mean, you can use this for all your input in the game, but I'm just going to use this for the window specific input like closing the window all that stuff so all the regular game input is going to be done in another way because this is kind of complicated uh but anyway so what you want to do is you want to create a sf event i just call it e you can call it whatever you want uh try not to call it event though because that name might be reserved and then you want to go into your window window i don't know how that happened window am i recording right now yes i am okay so let me think here so window is going to have the poll events poll event and we're just going to do e in here so it's going to grab an event from the window is going to shove it into this e variable now the next part is going to be to check what that event was so what you do is you do e dot event type equals uh wait hold on event dot type hold on why is that not working event type equals e sf event closed if that happens there we go okay if that happens then we're just going to close the window this window closed because remember this itself is not going to close the window it's just going to check if the close button was pressed and then if we see that it's pressed we're going to close the window so that's basically what that does if i run this now you won't see any buggy behavior what you should see is basically a beautiful as soon as it pops up beautiful like moving around thing so you can move around the window you can minimize it you can close it and that closes the game so pretty much that's what we're going to do but usually I also like this. I like if I press the escape key that stuff happens. So this E event key pressed and E dot event key dot code equals FSF keyboard escape so it's a very long sentence here but what basically what it says is if a key was pressed and that keys code is escape then well we don't need that uh then what we're going to do is we're going to this window close now you can do all this in one if statement but i'm going to do it in two different ones because it's too long and yeah but you should probably do it in one let's see so if i run this and i press escape that closes the window good so now we have two ways to close the window, and that's a great way to exit the game. But that's not what the game is about, is it? It's not about closing and exiting the game. Now, I haven't prepared all the stuff yet for textures, so I'm not going to be doing that right now, but we'll get to that. Uh, we can close down this main thing, but a very important part of the game is the player. So obviously, we need to create a class called the uh the usually i call it character but what we can do now is we can just call it player or ship if you want player ship but you know we'll just keep it like this again i press the virtual destructor you don't have to think about that yet as soon as we get into inheritance yeah you're gonna have to think about that uh, but here we go so we have our player constructor and everything we're gonna need a few functions here we go so obviously we need a void update and a void render boom very good very nice i'm going to define these and here we go 
like that. Very nice. Now we're going to have to add some things in these. So I don't know why I just defined them like that. But yeah, I'll explain it as I go along then. Uh, because we need to do some behind the scenes stuff before we get going. Like what I need here. First of all, this is very important for us. This window dot set. Here we go. So we have a bunch of set things you can do for the window. Now for our games on our different computers to run at the same speed, we need to limit the frame rate. Otherwise, your ship might go really fast and might go really slow. So until we don't get all this delta time stuff going, which is a pretty much ahead in the future, uh, we're going to use fr frame rate limit so that your game is frame rate dependent. It's locked. It's not frame rate independent, which is a very more complex thing we can do. But what we will do is we'll put it at 144 hatch because my screen supports that. And I like that. If you want, well, uh, you know what? Most of your computers might be able to run this. So I'm just going to keep it at that. You know, we'll risk it. I'm pretty sure it will work for you. If it's too slow, write in the comments and I'll try to fix that. Uh, but once you do that, you also want to do this window. Set vertical sync enabled. False. We don't like vsync. Uh, this, if you do want it, you can, but it kind of messes up the frame rate for me sometimes. So I'm going to keep it like this. Uh, and this is good. This is what we need. So once this is done, now we can go and do some core things. When we're rendering the game here, uh, we just have our render function because we're going to render directly to the window. But for our player and stuff like that, a good habit to get into is to actually not always assume that it's going to be a window. It could be another texture you're rendering to and it's a little more complex feature of sfml which we'll get to but uh what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna give it a render target a render target reference target okay and what we need for that to work is obviously we need to include this stuff in player instead and not in game like that um now it should pop up. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to include player in here instead. Player. There we go. Okay. Uh, once that's done, we will have our player included. Our game will pretty much... Hold on. No, hold on. Okay. There we go. All right. Now it's clicked. Okay. All right. Got scared there for a minute. Uh, anyway, uh, we're just going to copy this, paste it in our CPP, and now we're going to render it to this target. So we're not going to assume it's going to be the window or anything. We're not going to have a window pointer in player or anything like that. So this is going to be cool. Um, and that's great. Now, what is a player made of? Well, remember, we're going to use a texture here. All right. So what we used before was circle shapes, rectangle shapes, and these we can control the size of, right? But a sprite, which we're going to make now, is going to be dependent on your uh, texture size itself. So what that does for us is we'll have our texture control our uh, sprite and also that we can scale it in different ways and rotate it. And it's cool. It's just made for texture. So it's going to be cool. So SF sprite. And I just usually call it sprite. Nothing too creative. And then we're going to have SF texture here texture like i said we'll get to all this you don't have to worry uh we'll just start off with the sprite and we won't be able to see it in this video but in the next one when we have a texture ready you'll be able to see it but we need private functions again yes private functions in it sprite all right and before that what we want is in it texture to load that texture in and again, so we don't forget this, we also need void, of course. And so we don't forget this, go to your player constructor and do this uh, init sprite and this init texture first. All right, very important. There you go. Order is very important. Once that's done, Pretty much you will be good to go. Was I recording? Did I ask that twice in this video? Probably. Uh, okay. And our updating is basically going to just update our character. 
and rendering is going to render our sprite. So I can do that now. I can do target dot draw this sprite. Simple, right? And the way we're going to set our stuff is first of all, of course, we need to define these from our player.h file like this. And once those are defined, we can see what we're going to do. So we're going to load a texture from file here. Just to give you a sneak peek. And we're going to set the texture to the sprite. This sprite dot set texture. This texture. Good. Very simple. And what it takes is a reference to the texture, so you just have to send it like this. Sometimes if you use a rectangle shape, it's going to complain if you do it like this. It wants a pointer, so then you're going to have to do the address operator. But for sprites, you just have to send it in like this. And yeah, guys and girls, that's pretty much it for this video, I'd say. Uh, we're getting somewhere. Next video, we'll have a texture here. We'll create a background, maybe. We'll go from there, all right? Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully it's going well for you. Take care, keep learning, and I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, right? Bye-bye.